Hello, well, it's another weekend and another weekend camping. Well, it's not really a weekend, it's a bank holiday, last May bank holiday and half term. So we're staying for uh, several nights here at a wonderful Dinnis hideaway in the hills campsite up in the, not up in the hills of Snowdonia. Um, meant to be really good weather this weekend, but um, actually today, it's pouring down with rain and uh, yeah I've taken a day off work to come here and film <laughs> pitching another new tent for 2021 um, so I'm doing it on my own again and, and and tomorrow the others are coming down by train and uh, joining us when it's all set up so good for them <laughs> yes yeah, so um, this time um, I'm pitching another tent it's a family holiday tent so um, we've come away to test it for a number of nights here um, and to really fit it up. It's a massive tent and it's the Outwell um, Sundale 7PA. Yes, yeah, 7 means it's a seven person tent. So we're going to have ample of space and um, I've brought the camping trailer uh, with all the, the gear to, to fit it out and set it all up. So that's going to be really good. And yeah, I should mention it's not a paid review, um, but Outwell have very kindly sent us this tent and a carpet and a footprint for us to uh, review, test out and try out. Um, so thank you very much Outwell for doing that um, because it's a lovely massive tent. So um, I'm going to have to get it up. It's uh, say it's raining right now at the moment and um, the top of the hills and mountains here, you just see the clouds rolling over. So um, I'm going to get the ground sheet down. Don't want to spend too long, obviously, with the ground sheet down because you don't want it filling up with water and you sit the tent on top. Um, now, <laughs> the tent is uh, just over 34 kilos and it's quite a big bag. Um, out where I'll say it's a two-person lift and a two-person pitch and I'm here on my own so <laughs> I'm probably breaking some health and safety rules or something or other but um, yeah I'll set the um, cameras up and you can laugh at me struggling with <laughs> pitching this big tent on my own. Right well with the rain coming down I put you or the camera <laughs> inside the car with the window down so um, hopefully you're nice and dry in there whilst I'm out here. This is the footprint for the tent. Um, now it is a very large tent and it comes with a footprint. I tell you sometimes footprints aren't always that necessary um, especially if you're just summer camping you're camping on really good pitches and you know you're just doing it the weekend and you've got some smaller tent. However something the size of this family holiday tent we're pitching um, is potentially over the number of night, under a number of days is going to get quite mucky on the side and when rolling away your tent and putting it back in the bag it's it, it, you the top you tend to dry out the tent but it's the underside um the ground sheet that can get really muddy and damp and moist and what we do is we when we finish camping we use all the towels that we've used and as we roll the tent up we dry away wipe and dry the ground sheet um, because it's 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 that if it goes in the in the bag or where it's that's going to start making your tent smell of mildew and stuff like that you really want to get that dry out um, drying out the top half of your tent is usually easy enough unless it's unless it's pouring down with rain you could do it dry it out at home but the underside can be quite tricky and especially with a large tent like this so having a ground sheet like this a footprint like this that you can put down um, is going to really save the underside of your tent. It's going to protect it from the ground, add a little bit extra insulation as well. Um, you see it's got a reflective material here so it's going to add a bit more ground insulation, make it a little bit nicer inside the tent. Um, but it will protect it so when putting it away, the underside of the tent will be nice and dry. When you put the tent on top, you obviously make, you want to show it, make sure the tent completely covers the ground sheet so it doesn't collect water and have pools of water pooling underneath your tent. That's not a good idea. Um, the other thing is, especially as I'm pitching this on, on my own, a footprint like this is really good at helping you lay out and position the tent exactly where it needs to be because it's the shape of the tent, you fix this down and then you just put the tent on top. So I'm going to try and get this out now and get it in the right position. And we've got a lovely spot just looking down the hill. It's a lovely spot here, this, this dinner's hideaway in the hills. We, um, there's a lower field down there right by the woods where we camped last time 
a couple of years ago now. Uh, absolutely beautiful. We thought we'd try the upper field this time with a bit of a view of some of the hills, um, although they're covered in cloud at the moment. But the rest of the, the, uh, our time here is meant to be good weather, so fingers crossed or whatever. <laughs> right, I'm going to get this out um, and get this down in position. It's, it's sort of spitting me rain. It's not too bad actually at the moment, so I don't want it obviously getting too damp before the tent goes on, so uh, I better stop yakking and get on with it. I've pitched hundreds of different types of tents and um, footprints, <laughs> I still make mistakes with footprints because one of the hardest things is to know which way round um, they are. Um, fortunately it's got a little layout diagram here and uh, according to this the, the front of the footprint uh, tapers in a little bit for where the front of the tent is and um, it also has got some toggle up connections I think for the porch area on this tent which is rather open so I've noticed the toggles there so I want to make sure that we've got the tapered end at the front and the toggles on the side that I think need to be there. Um, it comes in with some um, tent pegs just to put the corners in. These obviously got flattish heads on the on the on the pegs here so that they're not sticking up when your tent sits on top. Right, I'm just gonna grab you out of the car. <laughs> Alright, if it doesn't rain too much, I don't think you're gonna see too much in the in the car, so time to get you out. Um yeah, right, I think I got this right here. Now, if you look at the front of this, there's this uh, little sleeve in the middle. I think that is where you can anchor your door into the ground. So a little pocket sleeve there. And then I think this whole front area must be where the porch is. Now, a porch on this tent can be open or you can zip a door on the front to seal it all up. And I think this is optional to, to go in there. It's got toggles on the corners here and at the front. Zips to zip up, make it a bathtub. Ground sheet or lay flat if you want it to lay flat. And uh, dogs in place there. So um, it's good, it, it sort of comes with the ground sheet for the uh, porch too. So I'm now gonna try and get the huge, huge tent out. Quite a big bag. It's, it's this plastic wrapper. Now, I was hoping to test pitch this at home first, which is already a really good idea. But the weather's not been great. And I've not had much time. It's been quite busy at work. So, let's roll it out there. Now, it's As a bag that you carry, this is quite large. Um, it doesn't have any wheels on. I think if the tent was slightly larger, how would put it in a wheel bag? But it is carryable. You see, I managed it myself. It's 34 kilos, um, so it's more bulk than too much weight, but uh, it does come with these compression straps on as well, uh, shoulder strap. So um, we'll see when we finish camping how well it goes back in the bag. For now, it's going to loosen this off and get it out. Now, the pitching instructions, as you would expect, are printed out here they're also on the website so um, I read these beforehand but basically it, it's like all of the Outwell um, tents, inflatable tents really you've got um, the Outwell pegging system that's colour coded and um, you pick out with the big metal poles the corners make sure all the doors are open and all the vents uh, all the air valves are closed and then you uh, inflate it and then once it's up, you seal up the doors, you position out with the rest of the pegs using the colour coded pegging system. And uh, hopefully, it's as simple as that. OK, 
Okay, so inside the bag we've got um, some temp holes. I think that's just for the arch around one of the porches. Um, these are the colour coded temp pegs for the Outwell pegging system. Let's open this up now. Okay, so in here. Right, so we've got the luminous pegs for the luminous guy lines. We took those out last. Um, we've got the metal pegs for the corners and bottoms, and then there should be the black pegs in here. In a oh, yeah, they're grey ones now, so okay. So we've got grey ones now for the corners. It used to be metal, so. I think we've got the grey ones for the corners, metal for the bottom, and uh, luminous for the guy lines. A few other things in the bag as well. We've got lots and lots of clips. So this is using the Outwell hook track system. Um, you can extra extra cords and stuff like this, but basically there's special piping in the tent. You clip these onto and create hanging points all around the tent. We've got this device here. Now this is a tool for adjusting the inflation valves in case they come loose or for whatever reason or you need to change something so that's useful to keep hold of. Um, there's uh, adhesive repair patches as well here. Um, hoping you don't need to use those and the pump. Um, now this is like the same pump we tried last week. Yeah Cyclo 10 pump is a very good pump. Um, comes with a pressure gauge on and it's dual action as well so um, basically you can pump easier and it will take half as long as sort of normal or you can double the pressure, it's a bit more, bit more effort to pump, but it'll pump twice as fast. Very good pump. So, enough talking. I'll try and get the tent in the right position now. Okay, so using the Outwell pegging system. Now this is the new Outwell pegging system, the Outwell light pegging system. So it's slightly different to some of our other videos, but basically it's still very straightforward. It is very straightforward. Take these gray pegs here into the gray corner anchor points and put them in. Notice the, um, notice the footprint underneath um, there. So um, just making sure this covers it completely. And we'll just put one of these in each of the corners before inflating. Right, just repositioned just a little bit slightly down the hill off of the lump. And um, yeah, you might have seen another advantage with the ground sheet. It was really easy to move this entire massive tent. Um, so uh, time to get back on and get it up. It's lovely and quiet here. Don't know whether you can hear that cuckoo. Stop cuckooing now, I mentioned. Okay, this is the cyclone pump. Press gauge at the top. Um, this tent, you inflate between seven and nine PSI, no more than nine PSI. Um, you've got an inflation um, point on the pump here <laughs> and a deflation on the other side if you want to suck all of the air out or something. So um, that end goes there. That end toggles in to the um, uh, valves, just make sure that the valves are set right and um, the other tip is to open the door so I can do that now that just helps the air rush into the tent um, as it goes up makes it a little bit easier
Whew, that was a workout. So um, that's all the poles pumped up. Um, I don't know what you noticed there, but what I did is I almost inflated them, sort of pushed them up a little bit, moved to the next tube, and then I went back and then inflated them all back up to pressure. Just, I found that just on my own, pumping up these inflatable tents, it just makes it a little bit easier to do it that way. Helps get the tent raising it, supporting itself, and it's easy to put the last bit of pressure in. Um, what I've got to do now is close the doors. I close the side doors. I'll show you inside so far. We'll have a better look when it's up. Um, but you can see it's quite a large tent. Um, so I'm going to zip up the doors now and square the tent out, pull the the, the poles, the air tubes out, um, so they fit properly. I'll just zip up this inner door here. <coughs> and this, I'm really good for trying this. This has got the uh, quick and quiet access, not just on the bedrooms, but on this dividing door here. Of course, you can take the dividing door out if you want, but um, I think it's going to be very good. Here's the front porch door, which I'm also going to seal up. Um, just while I'm squaring out. And you can see where the footprint acts as a ground sheet in the um, porch area. And you can see where that sleeve is there, is where you can anchor that door to the ground. So I'll probably be doing that. Other handy little additions I see in here is something I've called out on some other dish, uh, videos that I really like. Storage pockets in the porch area. So you can be sitting here and you can stuff all sorts of things in there and get them out of the way. Um, this front door comes forward a little bit. I think when I finish pitching, I might just roll that back and just um, just have it open for a bit. But with the rain coming down, I might change my mind. But it's nice to have that option to have that front door there if you want to seal it up completely. Um, it's got blinds on the door as well. Um, so you can have this as a, an extra enclosed living space. And obviously there's a strap that's running through here, the pole's tensioning, I will put that underneath the ground sheet and lift that up, and that ground sheet can toggle into place in here. But what I'm going to do now is just make sure I've got all of these forward. You see the inflating that's pulled that out. I'll just temporarily do it and just make sure all of these are nice and square, and I'll pull all the poles out square and make sure the uh, footprint is covered. Um, but before squaring up, I do need to uh, close the door. I'll just sit you back on here. Ah, fiddly things. There we go. Right. Uh, okay. So I'm going to square out, and to make sure the doors still close after I squared it out, you want to close the doors up first. So I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Well, and through the power of YouTube in no time at all, the tent's pegged out. Let's have a look. In fact, it was anything but <laughs> in any short. I think um, I think with a large tent, um, doing it on your own, I think it's not just the size and the, the weight that can be a problem. It's, it's the time taken pegging everything out. Um, and that's certainly we're having family members to help really speeds things up but it's out now and such a big tent has a lot of guy lines so uh, let's show you around the outside so here's on um, one side you see the uh, floating guy line system there's a lot of vents around the tent there is one here away from it oh, I just got a little arm to hold it open put that in place um, yeah so it's got um, an extra, it's got two doors on the side and this one's got an extra rainproof entry. So if you needed another way to come in and out, there's this door here. Also, they put an opportunity to put another high level vent in there. Um, obviously bug mesh on it. Um, that's really handy just to help with airflow and reduce condensation. And then we come around the back. Now <laughs> you see the amount of lines I've put out on here. I've also got the grey storm straps, not expecting a storm, but um, they add quite a bit of support. And you can see the top of the tent has got a sort of pitch roof line on it there. 
Um, at the back here is a huge vent. You can zip this up if need be, but I think this is really important because the bedrooms are right behind here, so helps uh, helps the airflow and get get condensation out of the tent. Um, you can roll this up and toggle it up, have it completely open when it's dry. But the weather being what it is today, I'm going to leave it like that. It has got extra lines to hold, put it open. Um, I've had to double up on tent pegs to make sure there's enough. Um, so I've just put it to that tent peg there. But of course you've got some extra tent pegs, so you can bring it out a little bit further. Yeah, so going all the way around the side here. Um, you can see the other door there. Um, and the vents open here. And then we'll move around the front. And I've not pegged out the front door. As I said, I'm gonna, going to um, just move that back and have it open. And I've not sorted the inside here. Uh, as you've seen, I've not been back in the tent since I, I left you. Um, it's taken a while to peg everything out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort the inside of this out in here and um, peg, peg this down. Now it's got quick and quiet on this door here. I think it's zipped shut as well. You can have, you can, it just because it's got magnets, it doesn't mean you, that's the only way to get in and out. Um, it's got a zip on here too. So um, I'll unzip that and then uh, be able to come in and go and open up the curtains. Um, leave the bug mesh down. There's a. It's summertime. It's um. Well, it's summertime. It's springtime actually. Still technically, um, but the midges are out. So um. Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure the bug mesh is <laughs> it needs to just to avoid them coming in. Um. There was one little temp hole in the um, in the the porch on the side door, and there's another one that goes across here that I'm just gonna put in, and that just gives a little bit more support in the porch area here, the cross facing. Um, I'm going to open the windows up as well. On this model it's just toggle not zip opening um, on the blinds so not quite as quick as can be as some other models but what you do have on the windows here are um, um, privacy so they're, they're tinted windows. Um, you can see out but it's a little harder to see in so we're looking out obviously at the moment. Let's go around and see the other side. So what that looks like now you see it's open. And there's the window open. Um, you can see a little bit inside, not much, can you? Considering how well you can see out, you can't see, see much. And as well you can see here, because I haven't toggled this, the blind's only halfway up. Of course you can do that all the way around. They've got very big windows on here that go in quite low down to so let plenty of light in. If you wanted just to have them toggled halfway up to get a bit more privacy on a busy campsite, that's of course possible too. Right, I'm going to um, get that pole up on the inside and just finish sorting the tent out. Right, open up the blinds and uh, come into the inside. You notice the bug mesh there, so it's on the inner partition door and it's quick and quiet so it just seals. Um, Self-sealing bug mesh, good idea. Um, well, almost self-sealing. I just need to adjust that bit. Um, right, yeah, so inside I'm going to put the uh, carpet down. Um, you see it's a huge, huge tent. Um, just managed to connect up the power. Right, so the ba main bedroom, you've got the master bedroom here, is this is the only this one has on this model tent, only this one has the quick and quiet on the bedroom. And uh, come in here, this is the main bedroom, it's quite large. Um, it's quite dark as well. Um, you've got the bedroom divider here on the side, let's open up the door a bit. Let's open up, you've got a big mesh panel here actually. Let's open up that mesh panel. It comes part of the way down, so you've got plenty of privacy if you wanted to get changed in here. Um, acts as a really nice privacy screen. Of course, mesh panel here, let the air flow through. You can stay sealed up in here um, without the bugs getting you. Um, yeah, so the dividers on, on this tent model, they um, zip in place down, down the sides. 
but they don't attach at the bottom. And I've seen a, um, a number of tent manufacturers now are not no longer fixing the ones at the bottom, although the, the other tent that you might have seen from our previous video the other week, um, that does. So um, if you have little ones, um, be prepared for little ones to crawl underneath and visit you in the first thing in the morning. Um, so yeah, it's a really good size here. This is the three person tent. It's um, extra deep as well. It's 230 centimeters. Um, we've got some camp beds. I say brought the trailer with all the stuff and we're gonna set this up as a holiday tent, um, a little home from home. So let's have a look at some of the other bedrooms. In here. And this. Oh. So here's another bedroom. This is the, the smallest of the bedrooms. Um, we might expand the main bedroom into that. We don't have any kids to come in. So we can expand. We might expand that or use that as a walk-in wardrobe. How about that? Um, open this other tent. This other tent, this other bedroom. Let's do one-handed. Excuse me while I undo this. And there you are again. You can see inside there. Uh, mesh at the back, which you can roll up as well if you want to get more airflow in. Mesh pockets down the side. You see those down there. So this is a double here. And um, we'll get another camp bed in there. And set that up. I think I'll have, have that room. Um, yeah, so time to get the uh, carpet out. So that will very kindly send us over the, the flat woven carpet as well. I mean, it's certainly if you get in a big tent like this, you're going to be the way for for um, holidays. I, I I get the carpet. In fact, with with tents like this, you often get the package where you get the footprint and the carpet included, which are often cheaper than buying them separately. Um, and it is well worth considering that as a package. So in here, it's going to put the carpet down. It's going to make this feel a little bit warmer underfoot. One thing we do, we have a raw no shoes inside the tent when we get it all set up with the carpet and everything like that um, keep it nice and clean so what i've done out in the porch area the wet dry zone area if you can see down there um i've peeled the layer back a little bit so right here we go so i've peeled the ground sheet back now the ground sheet's toggled in here and here and you can toggle in all the way to the front this ground sheet but all I've done is I've just peeled this back it's gonna make a makes a really good place I find to um, leave wet shoes and things like that I was gonna open up all the doors but I've just opened up the one peg that one in place so it acts as a bit of a screen at the moment um, weather should be nicer tomorrow though so I'm gonna go on and get this set up I'll see you in a few minutes so I'm just um, setting up the tent and um, getting out all the bits and pieces, all the furniture, all the accessories. And we've got something new here to show you as well. This is something that I'd seen, I've had similar sort of things before. It's the Atwell Kimberley. Um, it's not an essential item for camping in any way at all. It's a little side table, a little coffee table. So. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's for when we set up a tent like this, which is uh, for a family holiday. Just sometimes little tables, places to put things. It's very civilised, isn't it? Um, no, but I saw this and fortunately Alwell agreed to send me over a copy to a copy, <laughs> send me over a sample here to review. So this first time unboxing it, getting it out. As you see, it comes in this um, handy carry case. Um, I do like that we put a lot of furniture away in these, in these cases. It keeps them really well, it's easy to transport. But I'll just rip into the plastic bag so we won't be keeping that. I'll use it as a bin bag. And I think I need to rip it open a bit more. There we go. There we go. So you might have seen in plenty of our videos we've got quite a collection of um, bamboo furniture um, which I think look really smart. So I'm just going to try and pull this out and work out where it goes. As I say, it's the first time I'm doing this. <laughs> Let me undo this. Yeah, so it's just got some legs inside that unfold. That's actually I unfolded those first. Well, fold the legs out and then the side folds up. 
so I'm doing it upside down. So lock those in place and then these ones on here I'll put this down and do it and just pull those flaps up and it locks in place. There, let me show you what it looks like. There you are. And your little side table for sitting. <laughs> yeah. So it's not an essential item, but when you see the tents all set up with all the, the gear, it's a handy little table. Um, and uh, there's the bag it comes in. So I'm going to continue setting up, but yeah, I'm going to make really good use of that. Um, it's fairly sturdy on its legs, although obviously if you've got toddlers around uh, using to pull themselves up, it tips that way, not so much that way, but perhaps if you've got little toddlers around you might not be having this. Well having said that, it looks fairly good for those that don't need to pull themselves up to walk. It's actually fairly good it's height for kids to sit at actually, do a bit of drawing and stuff. But it's also handy height for adults to sit and just have a useful little side table. So, so far, it's looking really good, really sturdy, quite thick, legs locked in place. Yay! <laughs> right, on to the next item. And that's this Pardellus M. Yeah, the Outwell Pardellus M is a new camp bed. So uh, we've got a good collection of camp beds and we're going to really live it up this weekend with uh, all sleeping in campers. You know, we're, <laughs> it makes us sound like we don't... <laughs> we're, we're more than happy to go into a small adventure tent or bivy bag. My, my, my lad loves a bivy bag. Um, so don't get me wrong. Um, we like all sorts of camping, but we're definitely going to glam it up and make this a home from home this weekend. And we're doing so. We've all got different types of camp beds. Now this is a new one from Outwell. And uh, as you can see, I've not got it out its packet yet. You know, the little wrap that it came in. It uh, doesn't fold down quite as small as some of the other ones. The um, other... Um, camp beds that we reviewed and you can have a look at some of our videos for those if you if you want but it's uh, hopefully going to be a nice comfortable bed. I tried lots and lots of uh, different camp beds at, um, at the launch event and this one was very comfortable but um, yeah it doesn't fold down, it folds down fairly flat so we've got it flat like that but it doesn't fold over again like some other camp beds. Um, hopefully it's going to be fairly easy to put up. Um, you can watch me watch me open this now. Get this plastic bag off. Now some of the other Outwell, well the other two Outwell camp beds we have, we fold down smaller and come in a little carry case. Um, so a little disappointed this doesn't, but to say when I tested it, it did feel really comfortable bed, and hopefully it should mean it's fairly simple to put up. Um, not just a bed, of course. If you're out in the sunshine, you can bring this outside and use as a sunbed. And I think I'm going to have to get some scissors out to open this. Fortunately, ugh, slide open our Outwell kitchen store. This is the original Outwell kitchen store that we've had for years. Um, crammed for all sorts of things for the kitchen, including a pair of scissors that they've been put back in the right place. And they haven't. <laughs> Where have they gone? There's the pots and pans. Ah, found them. Found the end. Okay. So 
you notice here, it's upside down at the moment, but there's a the, um, little pillow, it's Velcro's on in, into place, and you can remove that. More of a padding. Let's get the other end of the... Okay. So, make sure it's locked in place. And there you go. Now it's fairly well padded, this bed. And it's got a nice pillow on there. So, excuse me, whilst I uh, test it out. Oh, it's nice to sit down actually. Quite hard work setting up all this tent stuff. Um, yeah, so that's fairly comfortable. And one of the things I liked in line this is that it doesn't make a noise. You, you try some camp beds and as you turn, the fabric sort of stretches on the metal frame. And it makes all sorts of noises that can wake people up at night, including yourself. But this one, this one doesn't. It's uh, very comfortable. So I'm going to test this out and uh, so far it gets a thumbs up but you need a proper night's sleep in it first don't I? So just to show you our three beds, there's one in there, dark in the bedroom isn't it? But um, there's one in there, so does him is it? There's the other one, right there's the new one down there, you can see me when you get a lantern on me here. Um, there's a new one there, and there's one we viewed, I think was it last year? Laguna Hills, oh it's a massive bed that one. Um, Shell's going to try that one, I'm going to try a new one. Everything's now set up, so come have a look inside my tent. <laughs> 